he had everything you want in a player. He had skill, commitment, tenacity, imagination, creativity, speed, strength, heck, heck of a goal scorer. I mean, watching some of the old films and as a goalkeeper, you know, I don't think I don't think I would have stood a chance. Greatest player of all time, incredibly talented, and had the ability to just bamboozle defenders. This beautiful style of soccer that that really just dazzled everybody, uh, everyone around the world, because they hadn't seen anything like that. I don't think we'll see anyone like Pele ever again. What he did at that time. I grew in the soccer. Soccer is the beautiful game. Pele's junior club team coach actually brought him to Santos uh, at age 15 for a tryout uh, at Santos FC, and he told the directors of the club that I'm bringing you the, this guy's gonna be the greatest football player in the world. Valdemar de Brito, he was uh, coach with the team with my father, he used to play in Bauru, <coughs> in Terlanda of Sao Paulo. Then uh, he, he come to my father and said, listen, he said he has a new team, he wanted to get uh, new players. Uh, I want to take Pelé to, to, to make a test there, to train. Because Santos gives a lot of opportunity for the youngest player. They were impressed enough where they, they gave him a, a contract at age 15 in 1956. Shortly thereafter, he made his senior team debut and he scored his first goal at age 16. Then. Uh, not much later after that, he was chosen for the Brazil national team for the 1958 World Cup. It's amazing because a lot of people, they say, oh, you are only 17 years old. You should, you know, be nervous. It was difficult to you, but it was opposite because I, I just want to play. One day I was selected for the national team. I thought, oh my God, thank you. The bicycle kick that he did in, in the World Cup, I mean, that is, that is probably the most you know, iconic shot for Pelé. I think it was the, 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 the first goal because the, the, the second one was by head. The other one was the goal who I liked. He took the team on his shoulders and led them to victory. And to be such a young age to really start out in the World Cup and to continue to develop over the years and be the leader of their team over the years like that, I don't think we'll see that in my lifetime. I never, never have in my mind you know, to be champion <laughs> of the world at that age. But uh, when do we finish the World Cup? You no, know, I, I scored this goal and then the, the, the game finished uh, exactly when I scored, I scored the goal. I, uh, I was, you know, uh, cry, I, I, I start to think in my family, in my father. It was one of the things I, I never forget. In 66, the team just didn't quite come together. A very talented squad, but found it tough against the tough physical style of many of their opponents. Brazil had been very disappointed in 1966 to bomb out of the tournament in the way they did, and they had this opportunity going into 1970. If they won the World Cup, it would be the third time they'd lifted the trophy, and they'd get to keep the trophy forevermore. If you want to evoke passion and memories and fond memories among any soccer fan, you just have to say this, Brazil, 1970. That team was the greatest team that ever pulled on a shirt. They were incredibly talented and they played soccer the way it's supposed to be played. They call soccer the beautiful game and they certainly adhered to those principles. World Cup and then 70 in Mexico, that was difficult for me. I already decided to play the, the last World Cup in 70. Then that was, was tough for me. I think, oh my God, uh, it would be my last World Cup, uh, help me, I don't want to lose. Just this magical team, you reel off names. It's not just about Pele, you had Pele, you had Rivellino, you had Jairzinho, you had Tostal, just players who were superstars in their own right, but were able to come together for this collective team. 
The 1970 World Cup final was two very, very different teams. On one side you had Brazil, these incredibly talented attacking players. On the other side, an Italian side that was really based around very, very solid and sound defense. Final score was 4-1 to Brazil, but it wasn't even as close as that. The Brazilians were so dominant in the game. Brazil breezed their way through the tournament, swept their opponents out of the way, and just etched their names in soccer history. That World Cup really cemented Brazil as the team in world soccer, winning the World Cup for a third time, the first team to ever do that. In the summer of 1977, New York City changed everything. Pelé was semi-retired from soccer in general, and then the, the NASL, North American Soccer League, came calling, and they were going after all the big stars in the soccer world. Pelé, amazingly enough, uh, came to the New York Cosmos. I was very fortunate to, uh, as a young player, uh, you know, young kid, 10 years old, uh, to be a ball boy uh, for the Cosmos. It was awesome. And uh, you go down and you're in the tunnel and all the players are there and Pele's standing right there. And I'm thinking, here's one of the best, he's the best player in the world. And it was pretty cool. He hadn't played uh, in a while uh, regularly, but he was the main attraction for the Cosmos. They were must-see for not just soccer fans, but sports fans. It was this international like, you know, group that was put together, some of the best players in the world, and Pele was there. He led the Cosmos to the championship, showing that he still had enough in, in his game. And it really gave Americans an ideal of that quality, beautiful, high-level soccer could actually be played in stadiums in America. It put soccer on the map, it, to the point where Pele's final game was actually played with the, with the Cosmos. It was televised all around the world. People like Muhammad Ali, who were some of his best friends, came in and, and paid their respects, you know, just to watch him play his final game. Pele was the, the first player that really jumped into the modern era of play before everybody else. And I think that's what separated him, where he dominated teams. It was a style of play that, that soccer purists love and could watch time and time again. It was attacking, it was free-flowing, it was passing soccer. It was a beautiful style of play. He was just, you know, he was, he was, he was an incredible player, he was an icon, and uh, you know, what he's done for the game is actually even brilliant. Pele, the greatest player in the world, yeah. Um, he is. Pele was everything that represented what a top player would be. Um, he was an ambassador for the game, you know, off the field, uh, a genuine person. He's more of a brand now. He's still recognized as the all-time great. He has this magnetic, you know, personality and presence um, that just attracts people. And that's why he's such a great ambassador for the game. The game for soccer for Brazil, I think, is everything. Soccer is the best pastime to everyone all over the world. I was, you know, one crazy you know, boy who, who went to the World Cup. It was fantastic for me. Yahoo!